it's Sunday and the weather is completely nuts. It's going from bright sunshine, really humid, and then it gets really dark and it tips it down with rain and then it's bright sunshine. And yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of ducking and diving today, but we've got quite a lot to do. I was supposed to be out and about today on a bit of an adventure, but uh, it was canceled because of the weather because the forecast just said basically 100% rain all day and thunderstorms. But as you can see, it's not actually turned out that way, which was a bit upsetting, but you know, who can tell these things? <laughs> so anyway, I'm up here and I've got masses to get on with and I've got two new additions to the allotment, which is pretty exciting for one day. Okay, and I am waiting for the first one to arrive. It should just be trundling up this path any second. She's taking her time, isn't she, Lil? There's a little hole in the fence under here where Lily comes in and out. We do have an actual gate, but she prefers this one. <laughs> where are you off to, madam? Ah, oh, she's going visiting. Okay, still not here. I can see her. She's just, she keeps picking the wheelbarrow up and I push record and then she puts it down again and, and carries on chatting. So I'm watching and then yeah, oh, she's going, quick record and then no, she's chatting again. So, um, oh, is she picking it up? Her hands are on the handlebars. Are they called handlebars on a wheelbarrow? I don't think they are. The handles will do. <laughs> is she going? She looks like she's, is she? I feel like a wildlife photographer. I think, she... okay, yep, yeah, she's got them, she's got them. Artichokes, like proper globe artichokes. A very kind donation from a plot neighbour. Yeah. So they are going to go right in the end of the bed opposite the netting shed. At the moment, we've got this bit of spinach in here. Uh, but this is all blown, so we're just going to take that out and maybe give it to the chickens. But it's going to go right on the end of this bed here. Because they get really quite big, this is the widest bit of our path because it kind of dips in to go to the netting shed. So uh, even if it gets massive, we're still going to be able to get round it. Yeah. Okay. Will you take that corner out?
here we go, chaps. The glow artichoke is in. I've wanted one of them for such a long time. And this is where it is. So if it gets really huge, you see how we've got like the path curves up here to go into the netting shed. It means it can just get really big and we can still get around it. Excellent. So while I've been doing that, mum has just started weeding the carrots here. The weeds are growing so quick at the moment. It's just like never ending. Cause I only weeded this last week. In fact, I think it was on the vlog last week. And, but you can see how much the carrots themselves have actually grown. And these two rows here closest to us were the most recent two I've sown and they've come up really fantastic. There's a couple of gaps, which is annoying, but over on the far side, that first row, see that massive gap in the middle? Like what's really interesting is there's, there's one that's kind of germinating in there now. So I don't think it's going to end up being as big as a gap as it looks, if you see what I mean. Okay. It's now raining. So I've nipped in here to tell you about the second new thing we've got going in today, which I've got to say, I'm pretty excited about. I'm just started talking to you. I haven't even got it. It's outside. One sec. It's a chow chow. So I've never grown this before. In fact, up until about two weeks ago, I'd never even heard of it but I've been given one. Thank you, Kay. I'm so excited. So never heard of this before. It is a member of the cucurbit. So it's like in the gourd family and it produces these really um, like bulbous, I think sometimes they're called vegetable pear. I think anyway, I've kind of done as much looking as I can and Kay's told me what to do. So what's really interesting though, is that instead of like kind of saving a seed and growing it from seed, it's the whole fruit that goes in the ground. So if I lift this up, can you see that there's an actual, like one of the things that it grows just under the ground there. And uh, yeah, so doesn't like acidic soil and we've got not massively acidic soil, but ever so slightly acidic. So I'm gonna put a bit of lime in the hole with it and it likes free draining soil which is pretty handy what with being on a sand bank and uh yeah basically i'm well excited about it and where it's going to go so you know i've been trying to decide what's going to go up the thing that i've got at the back of the pond well it's this <laughs> at least like i'm going to try it there first so that doesn't it's not whacking full sun but it gets a lot of sun and then it disappears at about like three o'clock so it gets most of the day's sun. They do say they can grow in partial shade. You just get a darker fruit. Um, and I wouldn't call that partial shade, even though it's not full sun, if you sort of see what I mean. So that's where it's gonna go. And I've kind of put a, I'll show you, but I've put an old like clematis trellis thing, kind of leaning up. So it's gonna kind of get it up onto that structure that I've made at the back there. I know I was going for a, uh, evergreen to go up the back there but I haven't been able to make a decision I can't kind of work it out so this is what I'm going for it's a perennial which is uh really exciting we're kind of building up the perennial stuff in the garden and yeah so uh I don't really have anything else to tell you about it because I don't know what it tastes like <laughs> I don't know how it's going to grow or anything so that's going to be something we're all going to find out together later in the year if any of you grow chow chow let me know. I'm going to be on the hunt for recipes, I think. Kettle's boiling, so I'm going to have a cup of tea first and wait for this current shower to be gone and, uh, and then get that in. Can you see? That was good timing, isn't it? It's just boiling. Are you having coffee or hot chocolate, Mum? Okay, coffee had. Come with me, little chow chow. Actually, I've just chopped this massive branch off the camellia and uh, <laughs> mum is fighting with the loppers a great to chop it up. 
Righty ho. So I've got my lime with me, which is just like a granulated lime. We've been using it for a couple of years because we've got this acidic soil, The um, we've got a problem with the club root. So we've been using it to try and sort of counteract that. But this is the patch it's going. I've cleared it of weeds and I'm going to continue the edging around the outside of this, you know, that's in front of the buddleia there. And it's just going to go in here. I've got a bit of lime and a bit of manure to stick in there. Lovely. Oh, God, loads of slugs in there. Right, have a look. Can you see? So right at the bottom, so that whole fruit is like sat in there. This is an amazing plant. So it's a little bit scraggly up the end here um, because I've been moving it around and transporting it and it was in my backpack <laughs> on my way home from work. But as you can see, it's got like new growth coming from the bottom here and there's kind of sprouts all up this bit that hasn't been bedraggled. So I'm going to leave this top bit on and see what it does. But if this kind of doesn't look like it's going to take off, I'll just chop it a bit lower down and let it regrow from the bottom. Yeah. Welcome to the allotment, little chap. I'm pretty excited about that. There it is. Oh, wrong way. I'm not very good at this bit. Okay, turns out I'm not very good at pointing something behind me when the screen's reversed. <laughs> but I'm really excited about that. Uh, yeah, I've got really high hopes for that. It's now absolutely chucking it down. So I'm going to go and stand in the shed for a bit. Actually, I'm not going to go and stand in the shed for a bit. No, no. I'm going to go into the polytunnel and plant some peppers. I brought one of each of the sweet peppers with me today, so I'm going to get them in in front of where I put the tomatoes last week. OK, tomatoes are all looking fantastic, apart from possibly the really tall one who's looking a bit sad. But he'll recover. He's just uh, he was so big. It was a bit of a shock to um, he was set in his ways, basically. Right, these are my peppers, the first lot that are going in today. So I've got kind of one of each. This is a Nardello, which was very kindly given to me by the Heritage Seed Library. So I'm quite excited about that one. Don't know what they look like, <laughs> just got the name. Then I've got two here, which is banana pepper, um, which has got long yellow peppers, I'm assuming. And then this one as well, which is black Zulu, which both were given to me by Jenny. Enormous thanks, Jenny. This one had a bit of an accident early on in life, but it looks so much stronger than the other one I've got at home. I'm putting this one in. Then I've got a Turkish Kill, which was which I actually won on an Instagram competition from Goulet, which was really exciting. And Frigatello. So Frigatello was the one that I grew last year, which I was just crazy about, like long, gnarly green things. And who else have we got? Citrina. So I've never grown this one before, but they're like small lunchbox size peppers of different colours. Yeah, so that's what I'm putting in. I'm going to place them in front of the tomatoes. So the tomatoes will get really tall up the back and the peppers are going to be along this front section. I'm going to, I'm going to plant them quite close to the front so they've got a good space between them and the tomatoes. I don't know how tall a lot of these get. I know the Frigatello gets really, really big. So I'm giving them quite a lot of space. And also, whereas I planted the tomatoes really deep, I'm not doing that to the peppers. This is only the first lot of them. Obviously, I haven't taken the uh, chard out around the side, so I'm only just doing this front section. OK, peppers in. Well, first wave of peppers in anyway. So it's kind of approaching lunchtime and I'm going to pick all of this Lucullus that's in this corner here. I'm going to leave the massive Ford hook giant that's over there because it's still going fine. But this uh, Lucullus is kind of come to the end of its time, really. So I'm going to take the whole lot out and that's what we're going to have for lunch and asparagus. The asparagus is given at this time of year. You have asparagus with everything. <laughs> so I'm going to pick this and then I'm going to go and get the asparagus in the rain and uh, yeah. Thank you. 
asked me the other day, I think it must have been on Instagram, or it might have been in comments on here, I can't remember. Somebody asked me anyway about how I pick the asparagus. And all I do is cut them off about an inch under the ground. But it's quite difficult because they're all coming up underneath and you can't see them. Just taking a big old knife and slicing through, you can take off the heads of kind of other ones that haven't appeared yet. So I use this knife, which is a curved end knife. It's actually a flooring knife for cutting linoleum and uh, carpet, but it works a dream. So this is a plastic handled one. I've got like a Stanley style blade one, but I used to have a wooden one, but I lost it and I haven't been able to find a replacement. But just the other day I found one on Amazon. I'll stick the link underneath in case anybody's interested, even if it's just to see kind of the shape of the blade that I'm talking about. But it's a really good knife because you can kind of follow the stem of the asparagus down. And because the blade is curved, you're already kind of around the side of the asparagus that you can just cut it off. And it really minimizes damaging any other asparagus in the area. So yeah, there'll be a link underneath to that. I just bought it myself yesterday, actually, uh, so it hasn't arrived yet, but it's due to be here next week. So be next time you see me picking the asparagus, I should be using a wooden handled one. <laughs> OK, let's go and make some lunch. We've got that chard to use and the asparagus. Look at that sky now. See, like <laughs> decided to go home because it's tipping it down and then now it looks like this. Then again, I am starving, so going home is a pretty good idea. Look at these laburnum overhanging the path they look fantastic and the yellow is just like glowing gorgeous okay lunch everybody knows how to make a jacket potato i'm going to stuff these jacket potatoes so it's just dead simple pierce your jacket potato cover it in salt and pepper and bang it in the oven you pierce it to stop the skin splitting and the salt is to help it crisp up when it's in the oven. So that's going to go in the oven for about 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. And while that's in, I'm going to blanch some of the chard. So this is the Lucullus that I just took out of the polytunnel. I've just washed it in the sink and bagged it up so it can go in the fridge. I'm going to do quite a lot of this, mainly because we've got quite a lot of it. And it's just blanching. So boiling water, dunk it straight under. Actually, I'm going to put a bit more in than that. Seems we are charred rich. Straight under, and then it's not to cook it through. You're just trying to make it smaller, like reduce it. So as soon as it just does that bit where it starts reducing and kind of shrinking in size, drain it out. I'm going to stick it in the sieve and then try and squeeze out as much of the water as possible. It's not desperately important that you get all the water out, but it's much better kind of the drier you can make it. Just going to squeeze all that out. So these are a couple of spring onions which are actually from last year they've just been kind of lurking in the beds and i've just taken them out this morning as you can see they're all a mishmash of sizes and varieties so i'm just going to slice them through and then give them a bit of a once over with the knife just to chop them up ever so slightly smaller and then i'm going to bung them in the bowl with the still hot chard and that's just going to soften them ever so slightly marvellous. Right, about 25 minutes later, jack of potato should be ready. If you've microwaved your potato before sticking it in the oven, it won't be as crispy and it will have taken a short amount of time, if you see what I mean. So I'm just going to slice this on like the long side so I get two shallow halves. There we go. And then I'm going to scoop out the contents into the charred spring onion mixture. So just a case of kind of cradling the side of the potato in your hand to preserve the shape of it and then carefully sort of scooping out without taking too much away. If you scrape the whole lot out, you just your skin just breaks and you end up with nothing. So you want it sort of like that.
Next in goes Gruyere. Then I'm going to divide it into two, kind of shape it into rough balls and then plonk it, actually I need a bit more than that, I wasn't very good dividing in half. And then you're just going to kind of mould it back into the potato skin that you've taken it out of, which will reform like a whole shape of a potato, if you see what I mean. There we go. So this one's going to be a bit bigger. <laughs> this one's going to be much less pretty than the first one, but there we go. Back on a baking tray. You want to put them on a baking tray rather than just loose. This is how they're meant to look. This is how it's not meant to look, but never mind. Okay, so we are going to have them with the asparagus done in a salad. So these are a mixture of bitter leaves. It's a bit of chicory, a bit of uh, the frizzly endive washed chopped but it's basically whatever you've got to hand if i had uh, some rocket i would throw that into that kind of flavor this is completely optional this bit i'm gonna crispy fry off some bacon so it's just a single uh, rasher of unsmoked bacon and then i'm just gonna fry that off asparagus straight onto the griddle i've cut the really fat ones in half just so that they cook at the same rate as the others but not necessary if you don't have a griddle you could just bung them in a dry frying pan talking of dry frying pans on the other side of the stove I'm sticking some flaked almonds in this pan and then turning the heat on so I just want to toast them off you've got to be so careful with this that they don't just turn into burnt crisps in an instant so keep an eye keep moving the asparagus around this smokes like hell this um griddle but you know <laughs> luckily your your eyes aren't streaming so as these start going you'll see they start turning really really quickly you just want to keep them sort of moving around in the pan i've got my bacon sizzling on the back burner there oh you can see these are starting to go once they're at that sort of stage just bung them straight over the top of the lettuce Then I'm throwing the bacon bits over. Obviously, this bit is totally optional. If you don't use the bacon bits, though, I would put a little bit of salt on top. Asparagus on. You don't want to overcook the asparagus. They still want to be quite crunchy. Throwing on top of that some balsamic vinegar. Be quite generous with this. And then the same with a really good quality olive oil. And there we have it. Get the half potatoes out of the oven. They should be just bubbling on top. Look at this. So now we've got the beautiful combination of it is raining really quite heavily out here. Can you see it on the floor? And then it's perfect blue skies. What is this? <laughs> This salad is perfectly nice on its own and just with loads and loads of crusty bread, but uh, we didn't have any crusty bread today, so um, that's what we're doing. The full recipes for both of these are actually already up on my blog and I will put the links for them both below. Good morning. It is a wet and wild Monday today. It's pretty grim out there, but I'm hiding in the greenhouse and I am about to sow my beans, which is, what am I going to say? Can't say it's exciting. What can I say? It's uh, thrilling. <laughs> is that any better? Okay, so I am doing six different types of beans this year, not including the broad beans or the field beans. I'm going to be doing three types of French bean, all of them are climbing. I have Violetto, which is a really phenomenal climbing purple bean, 
Uh, I've been growing this one for years and years and years. I did swap over to a bit of Blau Hild not so long ago, but I've gone back to them because I just prefer the flavour of these beans. Uh, they're absolutely delicious. And what's quite nice about them is that they can get quite large. A lot, a lot of the time, French beans, you have to pick them when they're really young, otherwise they're kind of practically inedible. They're so stringy. These don't seem to do that. So you can kind of, if you forget some, if you leave some on there, if you missed a couple, they're still really good and beautiful color. So I've got a purple one. I'm gonna do a green one, a green climbing one for the first time this year. I've grown dwarf green ones before, but never a climbing one. And what I've gone for is called Cobra. So it's just a round cylindrical green bean. Obviously, like, like I say, I've never grown this one before, but it's a pretty standard variety. So I've got quite high hopes for them. And the other one I'm growing is a yellow one called Necker Gold, which I'm really looking forward to growing. I mean, Real Seeds properly wins the uh, seed packet beauty competition, doesn't it? They're absolutely gorgeous. But so Necker Gold, uh, that's what I'm growing. Yellow, purple and green. I'm also growing a runner bean, which is called Moonlight. Uh, this one was recommended to me. Um, I grew I grew Polestar last year and it actually wasn't very successful, which surprised me because Polestar is like a really bog standard one. But I think it might have been something more to do with the weather that we had and uh, how things went at, like on site last year rather than the variety. But anyway, I'm giving Moonlight a go. And then I've got two beans for drying. So it's another runner bean, uh, but it's a large one called Greek Gigantes, again from Real Seeds. This is a phenomenal bean. It is a type of runner bean, like I say, but they're really short and fat and you get really massive beans inside the pods. And it's those beans that you then dry and you use them like butter beans. They freeze brilliantly. Um, they're delicious, so easy to grow. Basically, this is one of my absolute favorite beans. It's a gem. The other one I'm doing is also for drying. It's a type of French bean, but it's a bolotti. So this is another one which you let dry on the, in my case, arches. So I'll let them dry on the arches and then pick them off when they're kind of paper dry and uh, use them throughout the winter in soups and stews. I'm still working my way through the 2019 harvest of these. Last year, like I say, with the runner beans, we had a really bad, bad year for beans last year, which is an enormous sadness because I love beans. They're one of my favorite things to grow. And yeah, but we had had such a good harvest in 2019 that we're still eating those, having gone through our 2020 harvest in like a matter of months. So I've got high hopes for these this year. So that's what I'm doing. I've got Greek Gigantes and Bellotti for drying runner beans for fresh and three types of French bean uh, yeah and these are all going up the arches so I've got three sets of double arches up the middle which are going to have the Greek Gigantes the runner beans and the Bellotti on because they are pretty robust plants the French beans are slightly less robust they're a bit more spindly um, I mean I know uh, runner beans they can, they can just go on forever and they tumble over the top and everything so they're going to go on the more robust double arches down the centre and my three colours of French bean are going to go down the arches on this side that are kind of single arches they're joined together in a long run but they're they're single width I'm going to be sewing these I was going to direct sew these um, like I did the peas but we have had a bit of a uh, kind of uptick in the number of mice and things that are on the are on the plot and I've seen so many squirrels around that I just think if I start putting these in as direct so there's just going to be nothing there and they don't particularly like being pre-sprouted so I'm going to start them off in root trainers I know root trainers are um, despised by some people and loved by others I think they're really good they are flimsy yeah they, they are flimsy but if you're really careful with them they can last for years these this is their sixth year now these ones and they're still going I wouldn't say they're going strong they're a little bit um kind of crumbly at the top but they're still working and we've probably got another two years in them so I think you know eight years isn't isn't bad there are many other alternatives but I particularly like these ones because you don't disturb the roots and also you get the satisfaction of being able to open them up and have a really good look at the roots just all laying there like that. I just really enjoy them. One downside of them though is that they do just suck compost, like they are really quite compost hungry because they're so long. 
but I'm just going to go with it. Um, in terms of numbers, I'm going to be doing on the single climbing frame, like I said with the French beans, they are a less kind of vigorous plant. I'm going to be doing four on each side of the arches. And on the doubles, I'm going to do six on each side. So it's quite a lot less on the start on the doubles uh, because they're the more vigorous plants and I want to have a bit of space around them which means I'll have 12 Bellotti, 12 Greek Gigantes, 12 Runners and eight of each of the French beans. Okay I'm going to just tilt the camera down now it's absolutely chucking it down I'm sorry if you can't hear me and uh, just get on with this. Okay, well miraculously the rain has stopped and it's now incredibly bright and super humid in here proper sweaty <laughs> so um basically i think that's about where we are this week chaps um got the peppers in which was a big thing and uh got the chow chow in which was amazing got an artichoke in another amazing thing i hope you enjoyed me trying to put in a little bit of what we did for our lunch um, not exactly a uh, masterclass, but you know, it might have been interesting. That doing that with the potatoes, I do that all the time, just like ram loads of veg in there because um, it's just such a simple, easy way of doing, getting loads and loads of veg in. And particularly when you've got masses of stuff to use up, which is most of the time. 
Sorry, it's now really bright in here. Well, uh, another week, next week. I didn't get round to making the strawberry cage to put in this vlog, but that's what I'm gonna be doing in the middle of the week. And it's gonna be the Saturday video. So this Saturday coming is gonna be how to make a strawberry cage protection unit. Yeah, so I hope that's of interest. And um, basically chaps, that's all I've got to say. I don't have anything to cheers you with, which is all. Something's germinating where I thought there was no hope of germination. That's exciting. Don't forget that those recipes, uh, they are actually on my blog. Um, the website is now back up and running. It might not be perfect and there might be some links that don't quite work, but the, it is working. And I will put the links to both of the recipe blog posts and the website itself um, underneath in the blurb, along with the link for the asparagus knife and anything else i keep getting a lot of questions about where we get our metal mesh from so i will put a link to that underneath as well this week actually do you know what it's just too bright i'm just gonna go up go in the shed so it is so bright in that greenhouse i'm just going to stick you on here and uh, finish what i was saying because um i have to admit that uh, i may i have to admit that i may have rediscovered Sambuca last night and I'm not feeling enormously fresh and that really bright humidity in the uh, greenhouse is not doing wonders for me I've got to admit yeah so like I was saying the links for all of that is going to be underneath uh, strawberry cage next week um, I'm also going to be finishing off doing the polytunnel so um, getting all the new compost in there and getting the more chilies and peppers in or oh, not chilies so the chilies are going to go into the greenhouse, but they're ready to go as well, to be honest. So I'll probably get them potted up, get them in there. Um, but anyway, enough of all of this. I've only got water to cheers you with, so I'm not even going to try. So I'm just going to say I will see you next. Well, I'll see you on Saturday for strawberry manoeuvres, and then I will see you on Tuesday for more of this. <laughs> see you later. Yeah, I'm going to